From our studio here in Accra, this is Joy News Prime, the final news bulletin for the year with me, Pius Kojo Baka. Coming up um, on this program, we shall um, stand up against the normalization of corruption by the NPP. That is a charge of the chairman of the NDC to his party members as they mark the 42nd anniversary of the 31st December Revolution. We do not introduce another decade that will stop this decay. We are heading towards a country that will make corruption compulsory. Christians across the country are optimistic of a better 2024 as they join the rest of the world to welcome the new year with crossover church services later this evening. It's good to remind ourselves yes, to leave the past behind and embrace fully what God has for us for the next year. Critical issues including the country's fiscal indiscipline, large size of government and the inclusivity are issues that must be prioritized in political party manifestos as we gear up to election 2024. That's a call from an emerita professor of the University of Ghana to politicians. We have details as she warns politicians not to jeopardize the peace we are currently enjoying. Peace is, is a, a prerequisite. We do not, we need to ensure that whatever happens, Ghana wins and that uh, elections are conducted in a civil, peaceful manner. Also in this bulletin, member of Ifua Santuas medical team, Dr. Grace Bachman, reveals she nearly gave up on day two of her attempt to break the world uh, record of the longest singing marathon. One of our difficult days was, I think, the day two. Day two, um, yes. Day two, oh, um, late was. morning, yes. afternoon, there about where yeah. I think she just stopped everything and just left um, the the space. And huh? so, yeah, <laughs> she said she's not doing that again. We've got details of these and many others lined up for you. Please stay. Thanks so much for your company. Let's now settle for the details. And General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, Fifi Fiavikwete, is bemoaning what he describes as the increasing decay in the opposition party. According to Fifi Kwete, corruption and moral decadence uh, the party fought against during the time of the revolution have now become part and parcel of the NDC. Speaking at the 42nd anniversary of the 31st December Revolution, the General Secretary said the commemoration of the revolution is not an opportunity to bash NPP, but a time for the NDC to engage in self-examination in order to nip the inner decay in the bad. Kwesi Adai Kwanting has more in this report. The 42nd anniversary of the 31st December Revolution was organized under the theme Building the Ghana We Want, revisiting the decade that stopped the decay. The yearly commemoration is to remind NDC members of the ideals upon which Ghana's Fourth Republic was established. Speaking at this year's edition, General Secretary of the NDC, Fifi Fiavikwete, bemoaned the increasing decay in the current NDC. But we want that blazing flame to stop the real decay. And that decay continues to be in the NDC today. So I don't want us NDC to pretend that the defense is simply a day to bash NPP. NPP is not the issue. The issue is bigger than NPP. The decay even in the heart of NDC must stop with that blazing fire. And that is what this business is about. He said until the party is rid of the internal decay, their victory in 2024 will be meaningless. But it is in vain if we win power only to continue what we see, it is a very we win power only to do some of the things that we are seeing done and only to claim that we have done less. That's not enough. Chairman of the NDC, Johnson, a seeding Kitty on his part, noted Ghana under the NPP is heading towards the normalization of corruption and moral decadence if the NDC does not rise to fight the menace. I dare say that the way corrupt activities are being normalized. We do not introduce another decade that will stop this decay. We are heading towards a country that will make corruption compulsory. 
There will be a time when laws will be passed to legalize corruption. MP for Koli Kloti, Zaneto Ajiman Rollins, is cautioning the party will not shield any more who will destroy the party from within ahead of the 2024 polls. Now is the time for us to be honest about who we are and what we stand for. We must have zero tolerance for those who are amongst us who are destroying. If we are going to say that in the name of peace, we're going to allow people who are destroying from within to remain. There will not be any peace, nor will there be any victory. Chairman of the United Cadres Front also called on members of the party to expose and take on Baumia in all their campaign activities ahead of the 2024 general elections. In defense of the name M-A, H-A, M-A, Mahama, the only campaign weapon of the MPP now the emerging butterfly, we must not only strongly extol his actions and deeds, but at the same time brutally attack, take on Baumia for all his lies and inactions as vice president. The event was marked with significant activities, including the lighting of the perpetual flame and Rick Leon. We see a die quartens report. Meanwhile, NDC flag bearer John Dramani Mahama is promising an extra Eid holiday for Muslims if given the nod to become president. According to the former president, the additional holiday will resolve the challenges faced by some members of the Muslim community who are unable to fully partake in public holiday at the end of the Ramadan period. He was speaking at the 63rd annual um, conference of the Ghana Muslim Mission in Kumasi. It is our intention to resolve the situation where some of our Muslim brothers and sisters do not enjoy the public holiday at the end of the Ramadan fast due to the 29 or 30 day rule based on sighting of the moon. Therefore, we will add an additional holiday to the celebration of Eid al Fitr. If inshallah we are voted into office, we will add an additional holiday to the Eid al Fitr celebration. And we are going to do this by reconfiguring the Public Holidays Act so that Ghana maintains overall the same number of public holidays per year so that we do not affect productivity. On his part, founder of the Movement of Change, Alan Chemantin says, although 2023 was challenging, Ghanaians should keep hope alive for a better 2024. Fellow countrymen and women, as we prepare to celebrate Christmas and welcome a new year, I want to join you in your homes, workplaces, places of worship, and wherever you may find yourselves to share the joy peace and love of this festive season. At this time when we enjoy God's greatest blessing to humanity, which is the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let us remember to pray for the poor, the needy, lowly, destitute, homeless, the sick, widowed, orphaned, and those incarcerated in prison, that God in his infinite grace will look upon them with mercy and love. Fellow countrymen and women, this year has no doubt been a tough and challenging one for all of us. But I encourage you, especially at this time, in the spirit of the season, to keep hope alive and persevere relentlessly throughout the coming year, knowing that God has in store for our dear country good things. As we learn in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future with hope. We, the Movement for Change, believe very strongly that the right leadership of vision, competence, integrity and action, our beloved Ghana will rise again. Together we have the power to transform our society, empower our communities and create 
a lasting future for generations to come. On my own behalf and on behalf of the millions of supporters of the Movement for Change, I wish you and your families a blessed Christmas and a glorious New Year. God bless our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. An emerita professor at the University of Ghana, Professor Techiwa Menu, has called on politicians to capture realistic policies and programs in their manifestos. According to the former director at the Institute of African Studies, critical issues concerning the country's fiscal indiscipline, large size of government, and the inclusivity are some of the issues that must be prioritized in the manifestos of political parties. Speaking in an interview on PM prof uh, Personality Profile, Professor Menu cautioned that the peace we are currently enjoying in the country should not be taken for granted and must be maintained before, during, and after the 2024 elections. I think that peace is an absolute prerequisite, and I think that we don't need to go far. We can look around West Africa and the larger African region and see what conflict has done. If yeah. you have been following the conflict in the Sudan, for instance, I think the recent Israel Hamas war has diverted attention from all other conflicts, you know. True. But we do have serious situations uh, right at home yeah. around us. So peace is, is a, a prerequisite. We do not, we need to ensure that whatever happens, Ghana wins and that um, elections are conducted in a civil, peaceful manner that they do not inflame any kind of negative sentiments, you yeah. know, regional, ethnic, religious, etc. Also that we do have uh, campaigning based on issues, you yeah. know, we were uh, the last, after, during the last elections, I did some work with CDD looking at the election manifestos and many of them are about procurement, etc. We need to get beyond that. We are, we are, we are in the same space. We are hugely indebted. We have not transformed our economy. We are importing everything. I mean, we still talk about whether we've got six months of import cover or those kinds of things. Really, yeah. after, after so long, our ambitions should be greater than this, you know. So we do need transformational change. We need to move away from the fiscal indiscipline, the size of government, the overweening power that we have given to our executive when it comes to appointments, um, um, you know, building real inclusivity. We were talking about gender balance, you know, both in elections and in appointments, you know, and uh, we do need to get a, a move on that. So those are some of the more serious issues that I would like to see addressed to give our, our young people, and children and grandchildren, a real future mm. in this country. It was the last morning service in most churches across the country as many Christians danced and thanked God for helping them see the end of 2023. Well, later this evening, they will be welcoming 2024 with crossover church services. They are optimistic the new year will be better. At the Perez Chapel International, Bishop Dr. Selassie Jin Ajinasari urged the congregation to forget the past, look ahead, and press on. So, echo, press on. Prem Soko. One of the most challenging things in a believer's life is recognizing when a season is ending and a new one is beginning. Say, the reason why I'm saying this is that if care is not taken, we enter the new season carrying the perceptions and the baggage of the last season. More often than not, the former things and the past things cast a shadow into the new year or the new season we are about to enter into. And when you are standing on the summit of a year like this, it is good 
to remind ourselves to leave the past behind and embrace fully what God has for us for the next season. In his word to go message today, founder of the International Central Gospel Church, Pastor Mensah Otabel said, the new year will also will come with its challenges, but Christians should trust their maker to take them through them all. Over from one year to another, it seems like a very simple process. Uh, the, the clock ticks and it's a new year. Seems like meaningless, but one year is a lot of days, a lot of weeks, a lot of months, and so much happens in one year. And, and just to be able to live through one year, 364 days, that is a lot of achievement. So uh, we thank God for watching over us throughout uh, this year. To God be all the glory for what he has done for us, for watching over us, for keeping us and bringing us this far. Even if we went through the valley, he was with us. And even if we had great moments of joy, he was also with us. He's the Lord of the valley and he's the Lord of the mountain. And he is with us as he has been with us in the past, so will he be with us today and tomorrow. Our confidence in God is not only based on what he can do for us in the future. Many uh, see uh, their hope only in a future work of God, maybe in heaven. But God also works with us here on earth and in, in the affairs of life. And he is with us and he will guide us. The question many people ask as they face a new year is, what does the new year hold for me? Will I make it? Will it be good for me? Will I survive? Will my loved ones survive? Nobody knows the future except God. And that's why we trust him. And that's why we put our hope in him and our confidence in him. And we repose our future into his hands. So if you don't know what the future holds, just trust God. Leave it in his hands and he will guide us. God is with you. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God will lift up a standard against him. When we go through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord is with us. When the fires of affliction rise high and seek to consume us, the Lord will shelter us. And when sickness comes in, the Lord is our healer. I want you to go into the year confident in who God is. Not in who you are, not in who your friends are, but confident in who God is. There is no assurance that you, there will not be turbulence uh, on this flight, but the Lord assures us he is with us through the storm, through the fire, through the flood, and we will come through with a testimony to his glory. Still watching Joy News Prime. We've got more stories for you after this break. Hello, welcome back to Join News Prime. A member of Ifwa Santuas medical team, Dr. Grace Backman, has revealed that she nearly gave up on day two of her attempt to break the world record for the longest singing marathon. Speaking on showbiz A to Z, she said the team called a psychologist and after some minutes to pip talk, Ifwa rescinded her decision to quit. Ifwa sang for 126 hours and is currently awaiting the Guinness World Records to confirm whether she has broken the existing record, which stands at 105 hours. Um, yeah. The medical team, um, one of our uh, difficult days was, I think, the day two. Day two. Um, was, day two, was, um, late was, morning, yeah. afternoon, they're about where yeah. I think she just stopped everything and just left um, the, the space. And huh? so, yeah, <laughs> she said she's not doing this <laughs> again. In fact, so on day two, I actually thought, like, Everything was ending. Um, yes. Um, she just it, it took, yeah, she just left. It took some time. So then again, our psychotherapy was very, very important. Um, working on the mind, we had to do, at that time, the psychologist wasn't around, had to call um, on speaker. Um, they, we know what to say. We know what, mm -hmm. the team was solid. Mm -hmm. Very, very solid. Wow. Yeah, we knew what to say. So we did a short
short period of time, she just gets up, say, I'm a champion, let's go, let's do this. <laughs> so when yeah, you say, yeah, I'm yeah. tired, then you... We'll yeah, find a way. We, we find yeah. a way. If West voice coach Daniel Freeman says the scariest moment for the team was when she lost her voice. When she lost her voice, that was the scariest moment, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> For all of yeah. us. For everybody. Everybody. She was scared. We were scared. The family was scared. Nana, it, it, it just <laughs> challenge. Everybody was confused at, at a point. But then, I was even home. When I got a call from... Um, uh, um, who? Eugene. Eugene. You just say, your girl, they lose your voice. Where you did? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had just gone home. Come I said, okay. magic. Uh, come on, you, you for sure. I said, okay, give me 15 minutes. I quickly took my, this thing. I said, oh, no, this kind of voice she had. No, no, no. I grabbed, I came, I grabbed a container of salt. Okay. <laughs> but I won't give you all the trade secrets. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I will ask uh, Dr. Doctor will not give you all the trade secrets. <laughs> now we have something we can trade for other things. We are not going to give you all the details. Okay, don't, don't let me mention, give let me give you a heads up. Don't you mention it already. <laughs> so I grabbed something, you know, and based on experience. Okay. And I had met the doctors. I knew we had a fantastic connection right from the beginning. Okay. I knew that. Oh, so we went. So I went, sat down with her. You know, and we started working. They had their other things. We, well, Doing. we rubbed minds together. We yeah. were asking, you know, they brought this. I said, okay, based on what I know about this, I think, no, this is not, this will not be suitable at this time. You know, and it was just seamless. And then we started working. And then mm. I knew I had to get. Deputy Head of Corporate Affairs at the Ghana Tourism Authority, Kofi Ataka Krakusi, who was also on the show, said if Santua was selected as one of Ghana's tourism ambassadors, so she will continue to project Ghana like she did with her singing marathon. Then, then you appointed her tourism ambassador. Yeah. Okay. What does that mean? Good. Um, yesterday during the after party, our chief executive, true Mr. Kwesi Ajiban, true our deputy CEO, Mr. Ben Ananisi, he is in charge of finance and administration, okay. had to pronounce that um, Ifua has been appointed as a tourism ambassador. What it means is that um, she, she aims at... Uh, projecting already she has she has put the spotlight on ghana so it gives her it gives her enough responsibility to work with us closely mm. to project the country more and market the country mm. domestically and internationally like like it is yes it is a matter that is how come it is, it is, it <laughs> you is. Know? so that is how come we had to appoint her as a tourism ambassador mm. because this is a great fit which goes to the advantage of the country that global recognition we can't take it for granted i'm telling you Yes, we can't take that for for granted. And then also you look at you look at um, the international um, international fever that comes with it. Okay. We are leveraging. Of course, it is very important to leverage on the personality. Image New Woman, a non-governmental organization, has urged Ghanaian women to be resilient, promoting personal growth and, of course, emotional freedom in order to take a charge of their own lives and realize their full potentials. Speaking to Joy News at this year's Renewed Woman event, founder and CEO of Emerge New Woman Lady Amir encouraged women to embark on their own journeys of self-discovery and growth. Here's more. Renewed Woman is an annual event organized by Emerge New Woman, a registered non-governmental organization in Ghana, dedicated to promoting and enhancing mental health support for women it offers a transformative gathering for women, providing crucial mental wellness support through psychoeducation, therapeutic interventions, and advisory services. Speaking to Joy News, founder and CEO of Emerge New Woman, Lady Maya said, the goal of the Renewed Woman event for 2023 is to inspire and empower women to be resilient, promoting personal growth and emotional freedom. Release ID is a daily exercise. After your entire day, you would want to sit down and process your thoughts, process the events of the day, process what happened, what did I do, what was my contribution, how am I interpreting this, and at the end of the day, ask yourself, how am I, how am I feeling about it? Stacy Amwating is the brand ambassador for Emerge New Woman. 
You can be anything you want to be. That's right. You can be whoever you want to be, and I will support you. As I grew older, I was like, okay, I want to be on TV, but I also want to be a lawyer. How do I marry both? My grandfather said, you can even be a pilot with the two. Just dream it. Because when you dream, you do not pay for your dreams. The theme for Renewed Woman 2023 is release with a specific focus on personal transformation and economic reintegration. And that's it for the bulletin. I am Pius Kojo Baka. See you next year and do enjoy the rest of our programs. Bye-bye.